This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream and my new streaming service, Nebula. Bryson, and I like animals. And today I'm going to talk about two of the most popular animal companions, dogs and cats. <coughs> Starting off, I'm totally a dog person and not a cat person. I think it's a spiritual thing though, because 99% of the time when I see a random dog, I'm able to successfully call the dog over and pet it and we become best friends. <coughs> Conversely, I have never successfully befriended a cat. I want to be their friends, and I try every time, but our energy is just so different that the cat just walks away when I try and befriend it. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Psst, 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 psst. Come here, let me pet you. No. And on one of the only times I was able to pet a cat, I made the mistake of petting its belly and... <laughs> However, when I wrote this script, I went to hang out with some friends and I encountered not one, not two, but three cats. And incredibly, I was able to befriend and pet all of them. Seriously, in my 19 years of life, I've had a cat let me pet it like once. And then after I write it down, I get three in one day. What are the odds? I guess the cat gods heard my plea. Seriously, it was like a switch was flicked. So if you struggle with befriending cats, write it down and then they'll love you. That's what I did. Anyways, since that experience, I like to go around the neighborhood on an electric longboard at night and search for random cats to pet. It's been very fun, although my neighbors did catch me sitting in their driveway petting their cat in the middle of the night once, so they think I'm kind of creepy. But anyway, let's move on to dogs. I love dogs, always have. However, I do prefer bigger dogs over smaller ones because in my experience, 90% of the aggressive dogs I meet are small. Big dogs are usually just teddy bears, while the small ones think they are more powerful than they actually are. I think it's just something we're born with. Some people have a cat aura, and some people have a dog aura. My dog energy is infinite. I love dogs, and I want to pet all of them. Can I pet that dog? No, he's Can I pet that dog? I've had dogs all throughout growing up. We had Pixel, Duke, and now we got Dixie. Pixel was a really good dog. When we were all really young, my brother Brayden took a sharpie and drew all over Pixel. She didn't mind, though. She was a chill girl. Mom wasn't too happy about it, though. Rest in peace, Pixel. Then we got Duke. I won't go into details, but we rescued Duke from some really bad people, and he had some trauma and didn't like other dogs. However, he did like our other dog, Dixie. Duke was a really good boy. He had heterochromia, meaning one of his eyes was blue and the other was brown. He didn't realize how big he was either, and would try and snuggle up and lay on our laps like a chihuahua. Even though it would compress my lungs, I would still let him lay on me because he was so cute. <laughs> He was also very good at eating flies. A good boy for the ages. Rest in peace, buddy. And our current family dog is Dixie. She is so sweet, snuggly, and cute. She has very expressive ears, and she loves it when you pet her butt. Also, she is so gentle with almost all creatures. For example, I used to have a pet guinea pig named Link, and Link and Dixie were friends. Also, Dixie used to catch birds for fun, but she wouldn't kill them, and she would bring them inside, and I would help the birds calm down, and then they would fly away. But I can just imagine them telling all their bird friends what happened. Bro, this big dog caught me and I thought it was going to eat me, but it let me go. No way, you're making that up. It's true, I swear. Nope, no way. Did you see what that Rottweiler did to Terry? Bango, 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 Terry. No way would a dog let you go. But yeah, she's a gentle dog. However, me and my brothers will sometimes fight and horseplay with each other, and Dixie doesn't like that. <laughs> she will try and defend whoever's being attacked, but she often misjudges who the victim is and will nip at the wrong person. Ow! Ah! Don't worry, she didn't really bite me. She just does a warning bite. She's never drawn blood, and trust me, she's a pit bull. If she wanted to hurt someone, she could. 
But most pit bulls are actually the sweetest creatures on the planet, and they don't deserve the bad reputation, because in almost all cases of pit bulls being violent, the bad owners are to blame. There are no bad dogs, only bad owners. I've actually had one pet cat when I was young. Why only one? Because my mom is allergic. Achoo. Achoo. <laughs> Anyway, her name was Katie, and honestly, she was an outside cat, so I don't really remember a lot about her. However, I do have one memory. I was two years old, and my family was building a treehouse. I was sitting up there while they all worked on the treehouse when Katie crossed my path. I remembered hearing that cats always land on their feet, so I decided to test it. We actually have video of it. The video didn't catch the fall, but you see the before and after and the reaction from my grandparents. Here it is. You're kind of high. Hi Bryson. Hi Bryson. Bryson? So awesome. Try to put your try to put your head well, through here. Today is Thanksgiving 2003. <gasps> oh! oh my god. Oh, my word. Oh, Did he push the cat down? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you don't push the cat. Can we push you? Bryson. Down? I'm sorry. I was only 2 years old. I hadn't discovered empathy yet. It wasn't a malicious attack. What went on in my head was cats land on feet. See cat push cat to test theory. She was fine. She never forgave me though. But the issue with dogs and cats is that you get them, you fall in love with them, and then they die and it breaks your heart. And so I decided to get a pet that's a little more long-term. Meet Scooter and Egg, my two pet tortoises. These guys can live longer than 50 years, so they might outlive me. They are very personable and cute. The best pet rocks a guy could ask for. Dixie is also friends with the tortoises. However, she doesn't respect them very much because I feed the tortoises carrots and for some reason Dixie really likes to eat carrots too. I don't know why. Anyway, I turned my back for one second and Dixie stole the carrots from Egg. She wasn't too happy about that. Although, since I feed them carrots, Egg now thinks that my fingers are carrots. <coughs> I often take the tortoises outside so they can get some sun and I give them baths to keep them clean and hydrated and I love them. I'm the best dad ever. Although Egg ran away one time and was missing for two months. The way it happened was crazy. I was sitting in the front yard watching a show while the tortoises were chilling. Scooter was in sight at all times but Egg was taking a nap under a rock out of sight and I would check on her every five minutes. This went on for an hour and she hadn't moved at all. But the next time I checked, she was gone. I searched everywhere, but there was no sign of her. Then I remembered that our doorbell had a camera on it, so I scoured the footage between the last time I saw her sleeping and when she was lost, and there was only a five minute window. I kept my eyes peeled, but nothing. It was like she vanished into thin air. So I went through the proper missing pet procedures. Missing posters, every missing pet app known to man, calling animal shelters, crying, a lot. <coughs> <laughs> and two months later, my neighbors found her under a rock. Egg was unfazed. She could have kept going. Did you know that tortoises can go three years without food? Yeah. But now that she's home, she gets all the food she wants. I reunited her with Scooter, and Scooter did not care. But I cared. I'm so glad we found her. It's a miracle. I've told you guys that I'm stupid before, but this confirms it if you had any doubt. Yes, I somehow managed to lose one of the slowest creatures on the earth. Smooth brain. They basically are my own little pet dinosaurs. Just size them up a bit and boom, they fit right in with Jurassic Park. Anyway, I now love both cats and dogs, but I think my relationship with dogs is healthier because they return the love. Cats aren't so generous. I'll still let them bite and scratch me so I can try and pet them though because I'm that desperate for affection. <laughs> To end this video off, I'd like everyone to listen to this PSA. If a dog rolls over and shows their belly to you, that means you should definitely give them belly rubs. But if a cat rolls over and shows their belly, do not under any circumstances pet it. That is a trap. The cat is just trying to kill you. I speak from experience. Oh, the sting of betrayal. And also the sting of claws and teeth. The moral of the story is, love is given, trust is earned and I trust dogs more. The end! Hey you, you like dogs? Of course you do. I mean, you saw the video. I don't like dogs. Well, I found an awesome documentary called The Secret Life of Dogs, all about, you guessed it, dogs. You can find it over at CuriosityStream. 
Curiosity Stream is an online documentary streaming service, and they've partnered with Nebula, a streaming service made by creators for creators, like me, where we are all free from demonetization and the infamous algorithm. We get to experiment with crazy stuff we couldn't do anywhere else. Plus, you get all our videos on Nebula ad-free, before you see them on YouTube. One such experiment I must recommend is my friend Tirzu's Nebula original about some insects fighting each other Super Smash Bros. style. By using the link below, you can get Nebula free, along with Curiosity Stream, so you get access to thousands of amazing high-budget documentaries and Nebula, where you get to support your favorite creators, including me. Here's my brain before and after watching Nebula. See? It got bigger! Still smooth, though. For a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual plan for my audience. That's less than $15 a year for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. That's easily the best deal in all of streaming. It's also a great way to support me as a creator. So go to CuriosityStream.com slash Hamanations or click the link in the description to sign up. You'll be directly helping me and my channel. Thank you for watching the video and thank you to CuriosityStream for sponsoring the video. Thumbs up. And now the video is over. Yeah.